it is the another part of Tapper series and in this tutorial we will learn how we can use output parameter with Dapper. If you find this video helpful then hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment and make sure to subscribe this channel to get more videos like this. So let's get started. So first of all we will move here and we will write a stored procedure. So here we have this table book which have title author year and this id field which is unique identifier so we will write an store procedure here so i already have written this store procedure so here we have this usb get book detail and here it have some input and output parameter so this one id is unique identifier and it is an input parameter this one title is and back 100 and it is output parameter uh, author is in worker 100 and it is also an output parameter and here we are just returning title and author as an output parameter and we are getting these details on the basis of this id which is a uh, input parameter okay so we are returning title and author from this stored procedure and that is the case and we will see how we can how we can get these parameters in our dotted core application with dapper so let's execute this guy and we are good now that's it okay so let me comment this guy and here let's just write select asterisk from book oops select asterisk from book and here i have to select the database so i can write here select asterisk from book now we have these records okay that's okay so now here inside the book advanced dot data we have the repository called book repository and here we will write a method so the method will be public async task and it will return a tuple here so tuple will be tuple will be type of string and string okay because we want to return book title and name of the author which has the string feeds from this method so let's name it get book detail and it will take id sorry g u i d id that's it and here now it is nice big and clear okay so first of all we have to use this line to open a connection now we are going to create some parameters here which will be dynamic parameters that's it so here parameters dot add here is the name of parameter which is id and its value which is id that's it and it's db type so db type dot grid that's it let's add one more parameter here parameters dot add and it will be a title and it is an output parameter so here we do not need any value so here i'm just gonna type db type and db type dot db type dot string and here we have direction direction will be parameter direction dot output okay one more thing it should be author author that's it so let's, let me resize it a bit yeah we are good now so now we have created our parameters here which is dynamic parameter id is input type sorry 
id is the input parameter and title and authors are the output parameters okay now what we are going to do here we are just going to write here a bit and inside sorry await connection dot connection dot query async that's it and inside the query async we are gonna write the name of the stored procedure which is this one now what it need so it is asking us parameters that's good parameters now it is asking transaction uh, we do not need to pass it command timeout no command type so just type here command type and command type command type dot stored procedure okay so you might be wondering that we haven't typed here param okay why we did not do this and why we are doing it here and here so we are doing this because these two are in the sequence so for example we need to pass a b c and d and here it is optional it is also optional and it is also optional so ha, suppose we are just passing a and d so how would compiler know that you have passed a d if you have passed it in a sequence a b c d then it would make a sense but you are just passing a and d so that's why we need to specify that we are passing d here so here if we just pass a and b then it is fine so, but if we are passing a and d it will think that you are passing a and b not a and d or suppose you are passing a and c then it will think that you are passing a and b not a and c so you have to specify that it is a c so i am passing c here something like that it is just an example okay so now i guess i was able to make you understand now here that's good now we how we can get these two output parameters so let's store these parameters here and let's say a title that's good parameters dot get a string that's it and here will be the name of parameter title and one more thing here which will be author oops small author and it will be uh, author and we have to put this at the rate right sign also here okay now we have retrieved title and author so let's return a tuple from here title and author so that's it that is our get book detail method so let's copy this guy and paste this guy here okay so let's open the book controller here and here i already have created this controller and i already have added the functionality so i am calling this so first of all i have this get book detail which is expecting good as a parameter and here i have changed its name to book detail so its its endpoint will be api slash book slash book detail slash and id as a grid now here we have called this method get book detail and passed id here and it is asking method that's why we are using a wait here and it is returning a tuple 
so we are just uh, what it is called destructuring something like that yeah destructuring we are using destructuring here and retrieving the title and author and here inside the okay we are passing an anonymous object anonymous object just passing the title and author so i hope it is working fine there won't be any error i am just hoping that but who knows so let's go here and run this project or you can use the dotnet run command whatever you want so here we have this page which is saying not found because we haven't configured our swagger here it will work fine in visual studio but to work with vs code you have to do a little bit of setting okay, that's it okay here, here is our method and let's go here copy copy this id and let's pass this id here and execute it okay so here we are getting the error so we are getting the error what that error might be so i'm gonna put a breakpoint here that's nice that's not nice so i'm um, let's see what is happening so if i click on this icon step into press f11 so i am able to go inside the get book detail method so now i am here and i can click on this step over f10 so here everything is fine and at this line i am getting error okay here i am getting error it is totally frustrating right now okay so let's go here here and here and let's see what is the error so string size property is invalid size of zero oops where it should have a string one size property have size zero so here we have a size 100 100 i guess we have to pass the size so i'm gonna go over here and here we should have a property like size and 100 that's it and same thing will be here author is also in where care 100 yeah both are 100 so let's 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 run this code so let's execute this guy okay let's go here and uh, it is again in exception okay so could not find a stored procedure usb get book detail oh oh so let's see let's refresh it go here programmability and stored procedure and yeah we actually do not have this stored procedure so i guess it did not execute that time now let's refresh this guy and let's check yeah now we have this guy okay so let's execute this once more and i hope i hope we are good this time let's go here and yeah now we are good now we are good so we have this title pride and prejudice jane austen that's the id we have selected so that's it for now see you next time